Today I'm going to show you how to light paint this photo and edit it in Adobe Photoshop. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm a car photographer from Bahrain. If it's your first time around this channel and you would like to learn all about car photography and Photoshop, then go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. So about a couple of weeks ago, I received an email from a fan and a friend all the way from Sweden, Oscar, asking me if I would be interested in one of the Monchard watches, a brand that was developed by three passionate friends to create such beautiful watches. Now, if you're not familiar with Monchard, then go ahead and visit their website to see the collection of watches. Additionally, you can visit their Instagram account to see the different looks that you can get on the different watches. So last week, I posted a teaser on my Instagram account. If you're not following me on Instagram, then go ahead and do so. I post a lot of cool stuff in the stories that you might miss out. And I've asked you guys if you would be interested to know how I shot it and how to get similar looks. So I've recreated the scene, which I'm going to show you in a bit. Now, a few things to note before I do so. Um, this is not the actual way of shooting watches because it involves a different set of lightings it involves uh, focus stacking and racking and and all of this techniques that are beyond me right now now here's a quick quiz for you guys out there have you ever seen a watch ad in a magazine or a newspaper and the time would always point to 10 10 or 10 8 10 9 let me know in the comments why you think they are doing that. All right, let me show it to you. All right, so here's the setup and it's very simple. So I was looking for objects in which I'm going to have below the watch, things that will shine and reflect back. Um, I used to have a black leather jacket, but I couldn't find it. It would have been a really nice looking a material to have when you light paint this. I have this tie and I found this stick that, you know, I just thought, you know what, Let, let's throw it in there and see what we can come up with. Now, in terms of the setup, here's the tripod. So I got the tripod um, extended all the way up. And I have this camera extended and pointed downwards on the watch. I'm just here looking at the LCD to make sure that I have everything centered. Now, most of the tripods uh, does this, the professional ones uh, from Manfrotto. And now I couldn't find a counterweight because the counterweight is currently holding my light up there. But I used the bag just to make sure to uh, put the stand in its place. And especially when you extend the tripod, uh, you get a lot of shakes. Things to bear in mind, I've uh, set the focus manually. So, you know, when it's too dark and you try to automatically focus, it'll be a lot of hunting. Sometimes, you know, the shots will be out of focus. So set the um, focus on manual. The other thing to note is to turn off any optical stabilization for long exposure. Now, most of the cameras would disable that by default when it's uh, going for a longer exposure, but just in case, turn that off so it doesn't try and actually stabilize a long exposure image, it will be a mess. Now again, I'm going to use the Ice Light 2 to light paint this. Now if you haven't watched my previous video on um, light painting interiors or car interiors, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Go ahead and have a look at it. I think it has a lot of useful information. Another thing to note, is that I'm not going to touch the camera. I'm going to use the app to trigger the camera. All right, so let me explain to you how am I going to light paint. Now, the way I'm going to hold the light, I'm not going to hold it on top of the subjects or the products or the watch. The reason why I am trying to avoid this is I don't want to get a flat look. See, when you do have the light upwards, you tend to have 
a flat look. There are no shadows, barely no shadows. But the way I've actually done that is by going low and doing one side at a time. So one half of a circle, like so. And I'm going to do it both ways so I can get as much um, shots as I can get. I can always blend in different exposures in Photoshop. All right, one more thing before I leave, I forgot to talk about the camera settings. Right now, I have it at F10, an exposure of, I think, 3, 3.2 seconds, and a focal length of 105. I just wanted to make sure I zoom in all the way down to get those details. All right, so I've already shot these. Let's go into Photoshop or Lightroom to examine them. All right, so now we've imported all the photos into Lightroom. Let's examine some of the shots that I took. This one, for example. This one is okay. However, it's missing that depth. There isn't enough shadows that gives it that depth. And this one is kind of side-lidded and I didn't like how it looked like. This one, I kind of liked. However, I think I've changed the setup. Moving forward, I think I went with this setup. I like this. However, this is kind of overexposed and it's again missing the shadows. Now this one here is a flat one. This is what it would look like if you've raised the light and uh, you would see that it's flat completely. It does have a bit of shadows over here, but not the shadows that I'd like to work with. All right, so let me show you the one that I have actually used and imported into Photoshop. I basically have chosen this. I like the way it looked. It had enough uh, shadows and curves and highlights, something that I can work with. And I've used several other shots to fix this shot. All right, let's jump into Photoshop and show you what I've done. All right, so now that we are in Photoshop, let me show you how I fixed this image. Now, I was happy with this as a base layer, but it had its own issues. If you look closely within the watch itself, there are some shadows within the watch that I wanted to um, get rid of. Now, I didn't have a really clear shot that I got rid of the shadows, but I had one that was minimal in terms of shadows, and it's this layer down here. Now, let me remove the mask. As you notice, the shadows aren't as strong in this image. Notice the date over here and this area. Now, if I disable this, you would notice that there is a shadow over here and a bit of shadows over there. And of course you have uh, these shadows over here as well. And that was basically fixed by having that layer and actually uh, applying the mask and layer mask on top of it. Now, if I show you the mask, this is how the mask looks like. And I basically brushed in the areas that I wanted. So um, let's disable this again. You'd notice that I felt that this area is a bit dark and I brushed in a bit of that exposure. I've done the same down here and within the watch itself. Now, there were a few things that bothered me within this shot, uh, within the watch itself or the watch elements. Things like, um, things are not balanced anymore. You see how this one is lit and how this one is a bit darker. Uh, it's the same, I think, about here and there. So I basically copied this area and pasted it into this area and I applied a mask to just remove. So if I remove the mask, this is the entire copy. If I zoom in closely, you would see that I've actually copied this area, inverted it and um, aligned it to look the same. And then I applied a mask and brushed away the squares. And I did the same with, um, I believe this one, the one on the left. I copied the entire thing, flipped it, and applied a mask. I managed to fix the uh, symmetry issues here. Now, one other thing that I didn't like is how flat this one looked like. So I looked for another layer 
which is um, this one that had these looking really good. I actually should have copied most of these in because I really like how it is lit up. Maybe I'm gonna do that later on. However, for the sake of this tutorial, what I basically did, I applied a mask and I've pushed on the mid tones a bit higher. Now I've just noticed that there is a bit of a color shift. Now what I could have done is um, basically added a uh, hue and saturation and I would just desaturate it a bit to match the colors and apply it to this layer only. Now what I did next is I created an empty uh, layer which I've actually cleaned up around the watch and within the watch elements. Now I didn't do a great job, I was in a hurry and I tried to uh, basically just remove any spot that I could see. Now I've missed this part down here and if I had to remove it, let's try removing it. I'll grab a brush, I'll use the clone stamp tool and I'm just going to sample from this area and um, apply it down there. Now you can use the pen tool to uh, ensure you don't go over the stitches, but I think that just did the job right. So this is how I'm actually doing it. I'm, I've used, I'm using the clone stamp tool, pressing Alt to sample from one location and apply it on the other. Now the other tool that I used, the spot healing brush or tool. And if you see the spot over here, it's just that minimal spot. If you just brush on it, it'll go away. All right, once I was done with cleaning, it was time to dodge and burn. Look how that gave it more depth. So uh, I basically created that gray layer um, let me show you how it's done. New layer, uh, command all M to select, um, select tool, whatever they call it. Shift and backspace, 50% gray. And then you can set the blending mode to self light, which I like. All right, let me delete this. Now it's a uh, pretty simple and straightforward um, the way you dodge and burn, I'll use a brush. I'll make sure that uh, the flow is about 3% and I'll just go from there. Now, if you want to dodge, you use the color white and I'll just show you how to do it quickly. And to burn, you change the white to black let's say this area down here and down there and then switching back to white again and I'm overly doing it just to show you how it was done and then back to white so basically you want to emphasize the white areas and the black areas that will give you a bit of contrast and it looks good all right, so once I was done with the dodging and burning part, it was time to add that contrast layer. And for that, I usually use the camera raw filter. Now, if you've been following me along in my other YouTube videos, you would know what I'm talking about. So let me show you the before and after. This is the after, and this is the before, and this is the after. Let me show you the filter itself. All right, so now that it loaded up, I usually increase the white. Let me show you what happens when you do so. So um, you would notice that the whites in the picture becomes whiter, right? That's what the white slider is all about. And that adds up to the contrast. Now you can do the same with the blacks and drop the blacks down, but I did not touch the blacks in this case. And I've added a bit of clarity, about 24 to give it more of a tonal contrast, another type of contrast. And then a bit of vibrance and that's about it. All right, YouTube, that was pretty much it. Now I'd like to thank the guys at WatchArt for this beautiful watch. 
Thank you so much. Now, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video.